I, over the years, have sung in many choirs, both here and uh, in Melbourne and uh, overseas. Uh, but part of my interest has always been what happens to you when you sing in a choir? What does it do for you? What do you get out of it? What, are, what is that social engagement that you involve, you're involved with? And this is part of my excitement about coming to work here, working in this research area, and of course, working with such a prestigious group of academics and researchers. The Queensland Conservatorium ha clearly has global significance in terms of its uh, uh, content and uh, its developing research agenda. And it's very exciting to be part of that, uh, part of that uh, uh, exciting development, uh, which I think will go on uh, obviously into the future with the projects that we've begun to set up at present. The uh, Music Health and Wellbeing Research Focus Area is really quite new, uh, only about 12 months old at this point, but it reflects a concern and an interest of researchers in music over centuries. Uh, commentators over the years have made very astute comments and insights into uh, how the role of music in people's lives. The ancient Greeks, the Romans, Chinese, over centuries this has been very clear. So now we're beginning to look at how do people benefit from their musical experiences and what sort of role does music have in their lives? And we have to, uh, within the research centre, look at the mechanisms, how this takes place, what is involved, what other variables might be involved, how we can identify the specific role of music in people's lives. And that's going to be one of the key focus areas of the music health and well-being research focus. Internationally, we've had some really interesting collaborations. When the Music Health and Wellbeing Research Focus was uh, launched, the International uh, Symposium, we invited uh, Professor Grenville Hancocks over uh, from the UK. He's an adjunct professor now at the University of Kent, and his particular interest is in uh, music and Parkinson's. And this is how we've be begun to develop that collaboration. I'm hoping we can develop it further. Uh, potentially, we're looking at working uh, with uh, Peking University in China to see if we can develop uh, another stream of the research over there. Uh, another person uh, that we've been working with from the UK has been uh, Professor Stephen Clift from Christchurch uh, University in Canterbury. Uh, and he's been particularly interested with the Sydney Dehan a research centre in Canterbury uh, to uh, develop singing uh, and the international project that we that I mentioned earlier, uh, the three uh, countries involved in the uh, choral project. One of the I think most attractive aspects of research working with music, health, and well-being is that you're moving towards the end of the cost spectrum, which is a really relatively cheap or free uh, therapeutic intervention, as opposed to what typically happens within the health sector, where your pharmaceutical interventions are very expensive, uh, other technical interventions enormously expensive. So you're looking at something that actually could be free, as free as the air, that is making people feel better, making feel more satisfied with their circumstances, making them feel that their quality of life is worth continuing, making them feel better about themselves and what they do, as well as giving them sometimes a reason for continuing to exist. And we've done some work with our choirs, our choir study, that shows that many people feel a sense of uh, loss when they retire from work, for example, that their uh, sense of identity is shaken, their 
uh, ability to plan the day and to know what to do with themselves is really quite uncertain. But having a choir to go to, people who you sing with and talk to, and a set of skills that you can use, as well as physical exercise and activity, often gives these people, uh, such people as uh, newly retired or older, older people, a tremendous uh, boost to their life and their lifestyle.